Profit is brought to you by StopToShop.com, your ultimate source for Pokemon singles, tins, boxes, and cards from a variety of other games too. Type in the coupon code PROFIT in caps with a dash and you'll sweeten the deal with a 10% discount on your full order. If you're looking for cards, make the stop at Stop to Shop. Hey everybody, it's Jay Woods here, and this is game one out of three of the top cut for the Rantoul, Illinois Battle Roads. I'm playing Chenlock, which is basically Sableock plus Blaziken FB, invented by Jason Chen, last year's Nationals. And it's a lot of fun, it's a good disruption deck. If you already like Sableock, I think it's a little bit better for this metagame. And uh, I'm playing against my friend Carver Warning, who's my testing buddy, and he's playing Dalgachon. I beat Carver in a couple games, actually a lot of games, the night before, right after I built the deck. And I also donked him in Swiss, so he's trying to get revenge, and we're friends, so it's about a, you know, mid-tension, but still friendly competitive game. I allotted myself about a minute before the video starts, so, um, anything for me to say before it starts? Um, this is a new experience for me, it's live, so if I, uh, screw up, that's life, but it should be cool. Alright, and we're starting. I'm starting with a Smurgle from Undaunted, Garchomp on the bench. He's got Ambipom active and a Garchomp C on his bench. Uh, Smurgle's Power Portrait lets you look at your opponent's hand and play one of their supporters. He's got the Pokemon Collector in his hand and I'm playing that. It's the only supporter in his hand and that's really good for me because the deck aims to disrupt your opponent's hand, give them a bad hand, then control their top decks and basically give them garbage for the entire game. Um, there's a bit of a glare on my half, not on Carver's, so boo for me. Sorry about that guys, um, I didn't know when it was recording. So I get a uh, Sableye, Unknown Q, Garchomp C. The idea is I'm gonna use Unknown Q to retreat the Smurgle, bring up Sableye, and use his Impersonate to play a supporter out of my deck to disrupt Carver. Um, I probably shouldn't have gotten a second Garchomp C. Probably should have gotten a Chad at G to control Carver's top decks right away. It's a small misplay, but I luck out because he doesn't top deck anything important. Um, attach an energy, drop a Crobat to do one damage, and just draw some cards of the look see, make sure my hand's a little more consistent. Alright, um, attach the Q, retreat, Smurgle, bring up uh, Sableye, and impersonate. That shiny card, which you can't see, which is covering my face on the playmat, is Osiris's initiative. I flip two coins for each heads, put a card on the bottom of Carver's deck from his hand. So obviously I pick the collector, he ends up not top decking a search card, so right from the bat he's in a pretty bad situation. You can see there's a double colorless in his hand and an energy, but he has no real search card other than a premier ball and no way for him to really get resources. From here, um, I can't attack this turn, or at least not for damage, but I have a lot of free time to start setting up because I know he has no search cards. This turn, I use my resources to grab the Chadot G that I should have got last turn. So I play a Poke turn, pick up, um, I believe I pick up the Crobat, yeah I do. Play an SP Radar to get the Chadot and use his power disrupting Spy. Let's you rearrange the top four cards when you put them down on your opponent's deck. So, basically what I do is make sure that Carver's not going to draw any search cards or cards that'll help him get knockouts. And uh, I pretty much lock him from there. I do apologize because this game is kind of boring. Um, I've got it running at double speed, so it should run about 15 minutes, but... Um, I don't know if he ends up getting to play a supporter, so... It might be boring, but you might learn some cool things about playstyle, keeping a hand lock throughout the game. Play the uh, Cyrus's initiative, grab another Cyrus, uh, get a chain going, attach to the Garchomp. I'm planning on attacking the Garchomp CX the next turn. Put a warp energy on Sableye to uh, throw him to the bench, which is not my retreat for the turn. My retreat for the turns with Smurgle Undaunted. And this is a nice tip that I'll give you guys. Uh, on a turn that you can't attack and you're just trying to maintain a lock, I like to use Chad.G's attack, Search and Escape. It shuffles Chad.G into the deck and lets you put a trainer card into your hand. Um, 
It's good for grabbing the trainer and also by shuffling Chadot G into your deck, you don't have to burn a poke turn later in the game if you want to reuse his power. So as many turns as you can do is search and escape, you can actually save yourself some time. Carver, uh, he's poke turning is active so you can level up his Garchomp to prevent me from being able to snipe him. Garchomp's weak to colorless, but weakness doesn't apply on the bench. So, his Garchomp C level X is safe, at least for now, from my Garchomp level X with energy. He has Lucario active to kind of wall, but um, again, I, I play another Cyrus, and this is kind of a, a really good thing about these kind of lock decks is you're allowed to play your resources while denying your opponent of theirs, and it kind of lets you take off, start winning very early. Poketurn, Fire, and Cyrus. So, the Poketurn, um, I don't... Okay, I haven't played it. I played an SP Raider out of my hand to go and grab the Garchomp C level X to attack. And I don't think I played Chadot G this turn. I think I know the Carver's not going to top deck anything good. Um, and that's uh, another thing makes these games boring is already it's been like almost 10 minutes in the match and right now is the first prize card. Um, level up to Garchomp CX and discard 2 energy to Dragon Rush's Ambipom G. Ambipom can knock me back out in return so it's a good prize for me to take and kind of puts him in a bad situation. He draws, attaches, and that's all he can do. He's got two cards in his hand so he's starting to get into trouble. I play Bebe Search and I'm pretty sure I go and grab the chat on G. So this is one of those situations where I save myself a poke turn because I use search and escape. All right, um, drop chat at G, use his power, disrupting spy, and again, uh, let's look at his top four and essentially ensure that he keeps drawing crap. And uh, you can kind of see <laughs> frustration in Carver's gestures. It's not a very fun game to play out. Uh, um. So rearranged his top decks, and this is a turn where I cannot attack. I just attach and retreat. And this turn I actually um do not disrupting spy, but rather grab Sableye and use impersonate. I guess I decided that because he only has two cards in his hand and one of them can at least shuffle his deck, that I would get the premier ball out of his hand with uh, my other Cyrus's initiative. In retrospect, probably should have just disrupting or uh, search and escaped again with Chad on G, but that's fine. Um, initiative roll, I get one heads, which is <laughs> what you should expect. Two heads is great, two tails is terrible. So if you get one every time, that's just fine with me. I made his top deck an SP radar, so for him to play it and shuffle his deck, he has to take the one other card in his deck, so. For him to do that, it gives him an empty hand, or yeah, empty hand, and if I control his top decks, he, you know, he has no resources. He gets Bronzong G, Garchomp has the double on the bench, he tries to use, um, at least I think he tries to use Bronzong G's power, yep, um, and I power spray it. Power spray is a really crucial card, and when you start bringing the lockout, um, it allows you to stop your opponent's powers that they're trying to use in desperation. Really good against Uxi LA drops. So I spray the Bronzong, which denies him getting the third energy that he needs on his Garchomp CX. Play Cyrus. This is my third or fourth, but as you can tell, I have a chain going. He really has nothing. Another Poke Turn, Fire, Aaron's Collection. And another uh, Poke Turn, and the Chanaji drop. <coughs> Excuse me. So I rearrange his four top decks, and at this point, um, I'm basically determining the one card that he's going to draw for his hand the next turn. Attached to Garchomp C, so this turn will be attacking. Retreat Sableye, bring up Garchomp, and Dragon Rush. I knock out his active Lucario, so he can't give the energy to his Garchomp. All he does is bring him up retreat and in his turn. And you can tell the only card in his hand is a switch, which isn't very helpful for him. So yeah, kind of slow, and this is a double speed too. I've got two prizes taken right now. 
play my last Cyrus, which I think I pulled out of my prizes or was already in my hand. Grab Pokemon Collector, Poke Turn, and I don't know if there's basic energy left in my deck or not. No, there is not. That's why I grabbed the Enhanced Collection. So, at this point, um, well, let's see, I actually don't, <laughs> I don't remember my game's play for play. Okay, I attach a double colorless energy, but I have no way of, you know, um, switching out to attack again. And I also can't take a knockout. I can only do 80 damage. Can't knock out his benched Garchomp or active Bronzong. So, I do what I talked about. I uh, grab a trainer card with search and escape, shuffle chat out GN, save myself a poker turn. I grab a power spray to uh, stop him from moving an energy with Bronzong. Yeah, he plays Aaron's collection for two Pokemon. Um, and at this point, it's kind of out of desperation. That's his, I think, only supporter for the game. And it's not one that lets him grab resources from his deck. Plays the switch. Or, oh, I, I guess he doesn't play the Switch. I have Smurgle up. He has the Unknown Q, which gives him free retreat. Um, darn Glare. I want to say that's a... Okay, it's a Pokemon Collector that I play. I'm grabbing, um... The Dragonite and the Unknown Dark aren't really important. Basically, I'm just trying to get the Chad G again. <coughs> play Chad G. Changes four top decks again. I mean, at this point, it gets a little bit repetitive, but it's kind of what's necessary to win this kind of game. And I think that's kind of the reason why some people like to shy away from this game is it can get kind of boring um, trying to memorize what's in your opponent's hand, the top decks, when to chat IG or not. A lot of players don't even play chat IG. They um, just go for the initial disruption and like to play it out from there. Personally, I think if you have a resource like that, there's really no reason for you not to play him. He can really, as you can tell in this game, just seal the game. It, I mean, you leave your opponent to a point where they can't even rely on top decks. They have nothing. So I've taken three prizes. Carver's still trying to take his first. <coughs> and... I play my Aaron's Collection to grab the two fires I discarded earlier with Garchomp C level X. And... I believe this is another attach and retreat turn. Yep. Attach, retreat... Oh, okay, I retreat to my other Garchomp, level him up, and play the Chad G again. I think the reason I'm doing this is I think there's one search card in his top four, and I'm trying to deny him from getting it. I keep the Garchomp C active because at this point, I have so much of a lead that I kind of want him to promote his Garchomp knock mine out so I can get the return knockout because from there he really doesn't have an attacker. He um I think debates doing it. Oh no, you know, I don't even know if he has the energy to switch to or sorry, he had the switch, did not have the energy. So wasn't able to get the knockout. I knock out his Ami Palm that he restored with a double colorless and dragon rush. So, <coughs> I'm down to two prizes. He hasn't taken one yet. Um, a tip to you guys, if you're ever in a situation like this where your opponent's cutting off your resources and, um, I mean, at this point, I only have two prizes left and you haven't taken one. In top cut, it's smart to, it's called scooping, quitting, whatever. Um, just, uh, Surrendering your match so that you can have enough time to play out the other two is usually a good play to make if you're down by this much already. And, um, again, this is uh, Battle Road, so we're just learning. But I think in the future, Carver knows um, he'll probably scoop a game like this if he sees it developing. Another Chandot G. I think that's the last one. Um, 
Um, I don't really know what I'm thinking about right now. Um, Man, I, I guess I am. I can get pretty slow. Um, I retreat. Search and escape to grab a premier ball. And leave Smurgle up and pass. Okay, I see what was going on. I did not promote my Garchomp because he couldn't take any knockouts that turn. He puts up his Garchomp. He has the energy now to Dragon Rush. Let's him do 80 to any of my Pokemon for discarding two. And he knocks out Oxy. That's his first prize. <coughs> I'm sorry guys, I'll be sure to drink some water before the next commentary. So he's taken one. I have two left. I'm in a perfect capability of knocking his Garchomp out with mine. I have a double color list, so I get the knockout. I have another Garchomp on the bench to deal 80 more damage. And one prize left. He puts up Dalga, plays Lookers, and I think at this point, yeah, um, he surrenders, kind of realizes nothing left to do, and we're on to game two. So, um, we kind of shuffle this one out. I make a mistake with the camera. I think we accidentally jump in not too much past the second game. I think we just go right into the first turn. Um, so yeah, this is kind of the deck working ideally. If you get lucky, you can use Smurgle or Sableye to get set up, get the disruption going. But, um, game two does not start ideally for me. I get a... No searches, no um, no key Pokemon. So we'll see kind of how I deal with that and how the game ends up playing out. Thanks for watching this first one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And let's move on to part two.